Yes. Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. Great. We're good to go. Good, 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 good. Can we get this going? Now, so the guest I have here to, today on the Strength Discussion Series is a, an amazing, amazing, when I say amazing, that's like, you know, an understatement, you know, an amazing, phenomenal African woman doing great feats. And I'm going to be reading her profile in a bit. And uh, you, you'd also, by the time you hear her speak, you'll be certain that uh, this is not an error. Uh, uh, this is by no means an error. Okay, so one minute. So yes, Folusha is a business and technology professional who currently works at the Junior Achievement Nigeria as the executive director. She's also a transformation coach who helps individuals on the journey towards becoming the best version of themselves. She's an executive council member of Women in Business Management and Public Service, WIMBIS. She also serves on the board of directors of Swift Net Networks, Corsant Technologies, Kuda Bank, uh, the advisory board of the school media. Volusia is highly enthusiastic about improving the welfare of humanity, seeing people walk in their purpose and being change agents to transform societies. In 2013, she was she, she, she co-founded a nonprofit organization, Serving with Love, SWL, where she currently serves as a member of the Board of Trustees. She is a recipient of the 2020 Social Good Awards in Personal Development category and the 2020 Seed Builders Women Impact Award for her contribution to women advancement and empowerment, digital transformation, and humanitarian services. Felicia lives in Lagos and is married with two children. Ladies and gentlemen, with a rousing, rousing virtual applause, kindly welcome to our guest for today, Felicia Badamasi. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Awesome. Sis, great to have you here. Great, great, great to have you here. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> awesome. Thank wow. you. Okay, so it would be nice to just so reading your profile. I'm almost like, hey, this 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 woman, we, we she must <laughs> tell us this journey. <laughs> it would be nice to know your journey, you know, as you know, we've tried to condense it in that profile, but can you just tell us that journey, you know, so far so that our audience can get to you know uh, meet you fully? Yes, definitely. Okay, so thank you once again for having me. It's a real, real pleasure to be here. Okay, so my my career journey, right? Um yeah started um, obviously when I graduated from university. Um, I got a degree in computer science. I graduated in 2002 um, from the University of Pittsburgh in the United States. And you know, my, my, my first job was really a computer science kind of job. You know, I was testing code all day long. You know, I worked in a telecommunications company then in the US and we had created, um, you know, some proprietary software and my work was to test the code, test it all day long, find out if it had any glitches, any hitches. And you know, in retrospect, I realize now that the reason why I wasn't so in love with the job is because of my personality, right? So mm. I'm a full-fledged extrovert. Um, I don't know that I should have studied computer science because there's no part of me that, you know, is okay being alone coding and then, you know, kind of releasing that. Like, I don't mind like the, like the technology part of it, obviously, but I'm just not a very, you know, I like to be alone. I get energy from being alone kind of person. And, you know, you know all about, you know, our strengths and all that. So you know how our strengths energize us. I was not very energized testing code. However, what I used to do, and this is all in retrospect, so this is how life is, you know, is looking back that you now begin to realize some things. Yeah. I realize now that the reason why I was always so happy to go to lunch with my colleagues or go to the tea, tea room for a break and talk to people that I had so many friends in the companies because that's how I was getting my energy because I'm an extrovert. I was getting my energy during those short breaks that I would have, you know, during lunch break, you know, we would go for a nice lunch, a bunch of us. And so I realized now that, you know, obviously because of my personality, that's kind of how I was able to, you know, get the job done, even though it wasn't a core strength of mine. So after that, I then moved um, back to Nigeria and I started to work for Procter, Procter and Gamble. I absolutely loved working at Procter and Gamble. It was a fantastic time. I had great colleagues. 
I loved the work I was doing. So my work then became um, a more technology and people related kind of role where yeah. I was um, at first I was a business analyst for VIX West Africa. And then I then became a client and site services manager for the organization. I loved it because obviously, you know, I got to solve solve tech problems for people and all that good stuff. After that, I then moved on to another telecommunications company here in Nigeria called Mona Communications, um, where I was in charge of operations. I then moved on to an insurance company where I was in charge of HR admin and IT. That was my entire portfolio because um, at that point in time, the organization was going through like a digital transformation. So my my um, IT skills kind of came into into play. I then moved on to an oil and gas services company where we were also trying to go through a digital transformation. Um, and you know, I was yeah, I was I was working in that area for about two years. And then now I am a junior achievement Nigeria who is also going through a digital transformation. And I'm the executive director. And I absolutely love it. I love people. I love the youth. I love nation building. I love anything that has to do with us. You know, helping people become the best version of themselves. And I believe that the youth especially are, are a focus that we all must have. I mean, we have approximately 62% of Nigerians 25 and under. And so it's a no brainer for me that, you know, people like us that are not 25 and under need to find a way to empower them and also help them become the best version of themselves. And that's also why I love what you're doing. I know that this is not the question that you asked me, but I love what you're doing because you are helping people realize the fact that you know, you don't have to be put in a box. You, you, mm. you, you really should be who you were created to be because that's when you become your real best. So thank you. That's my intro. <laughs> <laughs> Powerful intro. You know, you, look, look, you know, and I must say congratulations once again uh, on the uh, uh, role at the Junior Achievement Nigeria. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, and great work, great work, great work. So we're also hoping that we could get this fired up to the extent that we have more people in that community also come and share on their strengths. Yeah, all right? That would be great. Awesome. awesome. So, you know, reading through your profile, I, I saw something transformation coach, you know, so I'm like, ah, this one is Gallup certified. She's a uh, match well, this one. She's that one. Okay. Okay. Have you coined everything and jammed it up as one or what? Tell us about this transformation journey yeah. before we go on, oh. on the strength discussion journey. <laughs> okay. So, you know, honestly, I think that what you said is right. I think I... I just thought about all the things that I'm passionate about. I thought about, you know, the different certifications that I've done. And for me, it was just all about transformation. Mm. Um, when you when you go through a strengths coaching or when you, you know, get on the strengths journey and you get on the self-discovery path, you are transformed. Whether you like it or not, you'll be transformed. Mm. And so that's why, you know, I call it transformation because I needed a word that people would understand, you know, immediately and would resonate with people with regards to, you know, what it is that I'm doing when we get onto um, that journey. So for me, it's all about transformation because the moment you discover your unique strengths, your unique abilities, sir, you know that transformation happens, like, <laughs> it's like inevitable. So yeah, that's where that came from. <laughs> Great. So, and, you know, I love that. Uh, and, you know, somehow, it, the discovery of strengths or discovery of one's strength is almost also a bit of transformation journey, is a transformation journey of some sort that it just gets you to that, to that point where you begin to ask yourself, what have I been doing since? Okay, <laughs> <and> that, moves, <laughs> that moves next to my own question as to, you know, my, when I discovered my strength, I, I got to that point where I, I started becoming aware, okay? Mm. And, you know, from that point of awareness, it was clear now that I needed to develop uh, and then, you know, as I started to develop, I garnered skills, resources here and there, and I started to move in that line uh, towards mastery. You know, I feel that mastery is an ongoing journey. You yeah. Know? Um, so, tell us because when I've seen your, your, I've seen your move also. I've seen how you have moved. You know, between sectors, oil and gas, the tech sector. You know, and then without that, I've also seen you equip yourself in terms of building your um, capacity. Um, yeah. knowledge-wise and all of that. So tell us, what, what is your own opinion as to uh, moving from you know, self-awareness to mastery? What, what, what truly do you think? Okay, I think that the journey of self-awareness to mastery, like you said, I think it's an ongoing journey. Um, Rome was not built in a day, literally. Mm -hmm. I think that one thing that everybody has to understand is that it's really 
it's really like a journey. It's a journey where you don't know how long you'll take, but all you can do is just keep, you know, is just keep at it. Um, the starting point always should be discovering what your unique talents, abilities, gifts, whatever word you want to use are. Now with me, um, you know, you know that I like to tell stories. So, you know, one of my top five is co communication. So I'm a storyteller. Yeah. <laughs> I hope you are ready for me because I'm a yes, storyteller. Uh... <laughs> you know, um, for me, this whole journey to self-discovery started with feeling very lost. Now, when I say feeling lost, I don't want anybody to think that I hadn't got, gotten my degrees by then or I wasn't married or I didn't have children because I find that in our cultural context, you know, people mm. always feel like, oh, he's single. Mm -mm. Even sometimes married people with children, you know, feel lost. This was maybe like 10 years or so ago. <laughs> this was about 10 years or so ago. I was already married. I already had my first child. And I just remember feeling like there has to be more to life than this. I was working, though. I was working. I had my two degrees already. I had my bachelor's and my master's. I was working at a job, but I felt very lost. I felt like there had been more to life. And that's when I started this whole discovery journey. What I started to do was I started asking everybody around me what they think I'm really good at, what they think my talents are. Because for some reason, I felt like everybody in the world except for me had natural talents. I really felt so. I felt like, mm -hmm. oh, my sister is a doctor. She just finished medical school. My cousin got an MBA. Honestly, I was being so single-minded in my thinking. I really felt like everybody except for me had a talent. And so I, I, you know, I got on this journey, started asking people questions. What do you guys think I'm really good at? I started doing all kinds of online assessments, all sorts of them. I've done them all, trust me. <laughs> and while doing all of them, I started inching closer, you know, towards understanding a few things. One of the biggest things that I learned in that season of my life was that your purpose is not your career. Mm. Your purpose is not your marital status. Your purpose mm. is not whether you have children or not. Um, your purpose is not, you know, about what you studied in school. And the problem had been that for many of us, somehow the way that we had been conditioned was almost like your career is your purpose, right? So if you weren't feeling fulfilled in your career, you almost started to feel like, who am I? What am I? At that point, I wasn't feeling fulfilled in my career, but I did get that epiphany and that learning from that season. Fast forward a few years after, I discovered Gallup Strengths Assessment. Clifton Strengths Assessment. And mm -hmm. out of all the assessments I've ever taken in my life, and I've taken many, it was the absolute best one. Um, it was the absolute best one because of many, many reasons. One of which is that when I was reading my report, I was certain that they were using jazz. Because <laughs> how, oh how, did they know me so well? <laughs> how? You know, it was freaky. It was scary. It was like, what? Are you kidding me? You know, down to the things that, you know, irritate you, down to the things that, you know, you're like, okay, I don't like this part of myself. Everything was there. But I love the fact that even though it showed you the weakness side of yourself, it told you not to focus on that. You know, mm. it was telling you your weaknesses so that you know how to manage your weaknesses, but focusing Absolutely. on the fact that you have to develop your strengths to the point of mastery. So getting to your question mm. about mastery. Mm. If you don't know what your strengths are, you don't know what you are mastering. Don't be mastering anything. Mm. You'll be mastering what maybe you think the successful people in your life have mastered. Maybe your daddy, your mommy, your uncle. You know, everybody has that uncle or that auntie that they looked up to that maybe had a very big house. Or you'll be yeah. trying to be like Aliko Dangote. When yeah. that's not who got you. So it's very important that number one, you discover your own. Now, when you now discover your own, you can now start on this journey of how do I get to mastery? You can't master what is not yours. So for me, the journey of mastery has been so much easier since then because I now know what my strengths are. I know the things that make me tick. I know the things that drain me. In fact, I've gotten to the point now when, when I need to do something that I know is not an area of strength of mine that I cannot outsource because it's not, it's not, it's not everything that's not a strength of yours that you can outsource. Some things you have mm. to do yourself. You have to do yourself. I find yes. a way, yes, I find a way to get energy from the things that are my strength before I do that thing. You know, so I mm. do things that are in my core area of strength I'm energized and then I go and do that thing that I know is going to drain me. And maybe I do it for maximum an hour, you know, so I fix a time to it because there are things that we just have to do, when, yes, whether yes. we like it or not. But I think that that journey of mastery is a forever journey and there are many mm -hmm. elements to it. One element, obviously, is you then developing your own core strengths, you know, whether it's through trainings, reading books, podcasts, listening to sessions like this. The second aspect of it is you knowing what you are not great at and figuring out ways to manage them. So whether it's through outsourcing to other people, 
whether if you're at work, whether it's through finding your team members that that's their own area of strength and you guys kind of, you know, balancing each other out and all that good stuff. So it's really about you being able to figure out ways to manage them and also figuring out ways to develop them so that they can really get to the point of mastery. Because when you're at that mastery level, that's when, as they say, whenever anybody is thinking about somebody in that area, your name comes to mind first. Like you're at everybody's top of everybody's mind because they're like, ah, that person, that is their area. And people are willing to pay you for those things that you have mastered. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you know, look, as you started to share, I, I'm tempted to, you know, say, you know, right now, you, you've also even just energized, it, it just energized the room, you know, because you, you, you're speaking so passionately, so energetic, and, you know, it's, the aura just fills in the air. And, and so I'm just tempted to say, hey, can you tell us what this is your top five strengths? Or is it, you want to, can you tell us what this your happy, strengths are? Happy to. So for this one, one minute. And so for those that join us for the first time, um, this is the Strength Discussion Series. Um, and it's essentially about helping you discover your strengths. We're going to be, and you know, you, usually I'm sure you go for some career talk show or you even get into um, a purpose journey and someone says, what are your strengths? Well, I'm sure by the time you're done, this probably will be a pointer to aid you uh, in uh, answering that question uh, absolutely well. All right, so uh, for sure, please, please run now. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so my top five, and you might need to maybe explain to people what they mean because I'm not sure that everybody knows the Gallup framework but my, my, my top five are positivity duh yes. obviously i'm sure that you could tell <laughs> my second one is woo which is winning winning oh, others over. over yeah um my third one so it's peace wc communication mm -hmm. my fourth one is includer and my fifth is arranger so i'm positivity oh. woo communication includer arranger and that's me <laughs> wow awesome so just so and maybe we'll just touch a bit on each of these strengths you know because uh i'm, I'm sure people also get it, uh, illumined you know to the point where they're also able to say okay uh, do i want to also relate with that uh, you know i must say something you know before taking the strength strength assessment test the clifton as, uh, strength assessment test i'm sure you'd have had some pointers to some of these things that you have now come to now call with specificity these names, okay? So before you'd have been positive and people were wondering, eh, this girl, you're just positive. What is what's going wrong on? You, <laughs> Why you what's, wrong? Wrong? <laughs> what's wrong with you? What's your problem? What's, <laughs> <laughs> are you the only one? And then you're winning others over. You're, you're talking to this one. You have a cordial, you know, relationship building uh, skill. And people are wondering, I, I want to be like for Lucia, but you know, she's, that's her strength. You know, she's playing in an area of her strength. Now, you now take this test, and it's almost like, wow, we'll, 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 we'll let the cat out, you know, as in you can see for yourself that like, this is you. So please just, you know, take some time and just talk on each of these strengths, and I'm, I'm sure people can, uh, you know, get, get a feel. And I also share some of my strengths, too. Awesome. T.A., you know, like, you really just hit the nail on the head when you were talking about my first two, because that's exactly how it's been. Um, mm -hmm. I've always just been very happy, very positive. I, I always, by, by nature, by no trying or by no like excess, even like giving it any effort, I'm just positive. And I remember when I was younger, like I used to get the question, why are you always so happy? What is wrong with you? And you know, I used to actually think that there was something wrong with me. Cause I'm like, why am I always so happy? Like, why am I weird? Why am I strange? Like, why is it that even when something that's not so good is happening, the first thing that comes to my mind is the positive aspect of that, or I look for a positive, you know, part of that. And when I did the assessment and I saw it, honestly, I was in awe. I was completely shocked and stunned because it was so spot on, because it actually alluded to the fact that sometimes people even get annoyed by your positivity. Mm -hmm. You know, they get a bit irritated. Like, why are you so positive? Like, like you were saying, is it only you? <laughs> um, with the winning, winning um, others over, that's so, so spot on as well. I've always just had many friends, not by any doing of mine. It's just always been my way. Like since I was a child, like my mom always, always, always cracks a joke because I'm a December baby. So I was born on December 23rd. Mm. And so obviously, I mean, my birthday is like right around Christmas. I've never not had a birthday that was an event because even when I'm not doing anything, people just show up, you know, it's a mixture of Christmas and the fact that I have many friends. And these things are not things that I have done intentionally. Do you understand? It's just the way that God created me. You know, I was just created with these strengths and, you know, it's who, it's who I am. For the communication aspect, it's been the same thing. I've always just liked to talk, you know. I was one of those kids in school where the teacher would be like, can you please just stop talking? For sure, you talk too much. You talk too much. 
And when I saw that, I saw, wow, this is amazing. So this is actually something that God put inside of me that I can, you know, develop into something and become a proper communicator, you know, and really use it to, you know, inspire people and empower people and all that good stuff. With the includer and arranger, in fact, those two, the arranger especially, because I am an octopus, I'm sure that you can tell, even just from reading my profile, I do one million things. And I get energy from doing those one million things. Sometimes people, yeah. people, people tell me that when they see all the things I'm doing, that they get drained on my behalf. <laughs> I'm like, hey, yeah, sorry. I'm not drained though. So don't be drained on my behalf because I'm very okay. You know, those are my areas of strength. Those are the things that give me natural energy because that's what the mm. strength is. And so for me, that discovery has liberated me. It's liberated me because I don't feel bad about, you know, who I am. I don't feel bad about even sometimes when somebody maybe, you know, misunderstands you and makes like a negative comment or when something is misconstrued. I don't feel bad about it because I'm like, well, this is who I am. The only thing about, you know, this journey and mastery is obviously knowing how to manage them, right? So there are certain situations, for instance, where my positivity needs to chill and I don't need to say anything Mm -hmm. because there are some situations that people are in that they don't want to hear a single positive word at that moment, you know? (laughs) Maybe something really bad happened, you know? Mm -hmm. Like that's not the time for me to come and be, you know, and be spitting positive vibes. There's a time for that, but it might not be in that moment. So what I've learned is I've learned how to manage my, you know, indexes of all of them, of all of my top five. I kind of know when to push them up and when to dumb some down. The same thing with communication, you know. Sometimes you are maybe in a classroom or you're in a meeting or you're in a training and some people are not as outspoken as you are. So what I do with my includer is, I find a way to make them talk, you know, I can call their name. Exactly. I bring them in, you know, I can say, even if I have something to say, I won't say it. I can say, "Uh -uh, or hey, Chioma, or hey, half start, you know, or "Uh -uh, pizza, how far do you have a comment? You know, like finding ways to draw people in so that it's not really about me because I always have something to say. That's the God honest truth. (laughs) Well, well, I look, and I, I agree with you. Absolutely. So for me, my top five strengths, strategic command, significance, I have deliberative and learner. The biggest wow. problem I had, the biggest problem I had initially wow. was with command. The, the, uh, you know, and I also use this tool, and, and I don't know if you've tried using it. I, I use it for love, life, and business. All right, this this same tool. Um, so my the first five years of I'm going to be 17 years in marriage now. Uh, for the Whoa. first five years of <laughs> yeah, but the first yeah. five years was tumultuous. You know, it was it was like you know, but you know why? I didn't know. My, my strengths, I not discovered my strength. Number one, I also did not know the strengths of my wife. So guess no, what? Um, I have number two as command. And I was always wanting things to be done this way. Command. Can you imagine? Wow, and wow. I didn't understand that. Look, there are times when you use command, when there's crisis or when there's indecision. Okay? It was only when I came to this discovery that I started to say, oh, no wonder I had so many enemies. Because everybody says, Ty, we want to be in charge. <laughs> you know, must, must you be the one to talk? You know, that kind of... Even though I, I'm, I'm not on a communicator, but I always felt whenever there's a uh, there's indecision, I rise up to the cost. Another thing is the fact that I had what you call significance. So, so you can't see me do anything. So um, if I want to do anything, it just must be bigger than life. You are going so, big. You are going <laughs> yeah. hard. Go hard or go home. Go hard or go home, you know, man. Why, why <laughs> you, why, why, so almost like the, the name Strength Africa. I said, no, we, look, it, not, it just has to be Africa. You know, Nigeria will be a small, a microcosm of whatever we're doing. So can we just do something big and it'll be what and why? You know, if we fail, then let us fail. But the reality is that some of these things are pointers, you know, that before I wasn't conscious of, my realization yeah. of, of it right now has also helped me, you know, when you say you have to take a chill pill, I call it turning down the volume, all right? So there are some basements around those, those things. Guys, look, this issue around strength, uh, it's le- is liberating. Let me just say, I don't know anyone Great in team. the room that f- needs to drop in a comment. All you need to do is just raise your hand. Uh, if you have any questions or you, you seem to be lost in this discussion, wow, that these guys are just having strength discussions. They're saying uh, include that. This one is saying deliberating. It will be nice to, to have you. Do you want to say anything? Or can I call out names? There's Ola Dapo. Ola Dapo, do you want to say something? I can see some comments. There's some comments in the chat box as well. Okay, great. Great energy. Joanna says great energy. Um, Okay. So, well, I'm sure we will will kill this shyness eh, in case people don't want to speak. Uh, Shola, you want to say something? I'm allowing everyone to be able to share 
their thoughts as to the discussion so far. And if you have any questions, uh, I see Gomo, Gomo Lemo, you want to say something? Gomo Lemo, then Opa Demo. Wow. Truly, Okabesi, if, if, if that Opa is the Kabesi himself, uh, please, Kabesi, it would be nice to know what you have to say. So let's hear you. Ola Dapo, Akinoe. All right. Um, thank you so much. Good morning. Morning, morning. I'm just talking all of this in. In fact, I'm trying to catch up with the pace of our guest speaker. <laughs> There's so much that she's talking. So this is the first time I'm hearing some of these things. So I'm just trying to soak them in. Maybe much later I'll have some questions. But okay, awesome great. so far. Thank you. Oh, oh, great. Oh, great. But sorry, let me ask you, sir. Have you done any, any assessment of some sort to discover your strengths or even your personality or something? Yes, I've done some personality uh, tests in the past, but um, I've really not done this dimension that I'm caring about. So well, th th this I is something. In fact, you're you in that room, room, and you have a, yes, you have yes. you have coaches here. And you, in fact, it would be nice if you just do the test with us. And Felicia will just do your coaching. She has a specialized <laughs> coaching session. You know, you don't <laughs> lock him down with a, a Felicia. You can imagine you just you just move to mastery immediately. All right. That would be um, great. That would be great. Thank <laughs> you. Awesome. So we'll share details once we're we're, we're rounding up. Uh, Gomo, Gomo Lemo, you want to say something? Gomo, I see Folake Sonyowo, I see Ola Dosu, Ore Oluwa Lesi, uh, Shola Okay, Okay, Gomo, Gomo, how are you? Where are you calling him from? I'm calling from Botswana. Hello, everyone. Oh. Hi, awesome. Gomo. Hi, hi. For Luso, um, I'm, I'm enjoying the, the conversation and the, the, the energy is just amazing. So um, I just wanted to say that I can relate with so much, even though I'm a, an introvert myself, but I can really um, relate with all that you, you have shared today, uh, especially about being a positive person and sometimes asking yourself what is wrong with with me you know <laughs> it always feels so strange when <laughs> everybody's been negative and we are trying to come with all this positivity so now i i realize that i'm normal and i i should just dive <laughs> in my positivity <laughs> so thank you so much for for sharing i i just love your energy i love the energy in the room oh. and thank you thank you so much Great. Thanks, Great. Gomo, so, my, my fellow positivity sister. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, Cletus, and then we'll go back into the full session. So, for those that join us, the Strength Discussion Series, uh, Cletus, you want to say something uh, just before we go back to our guest speaker? Just a word or any questions or clarification? Cletus? Okay. What about the KBAC? KBAC would have been nice to hear your voice, but anyway. Okay, so okay. where were we? Okay, shall, shall I or, or solo guys say yeah. something? Yeah, I'd like to share something. I really enjoyed the session Hola. so far. Hi, yeah. Felicia. I was at one of Felicia's um, strength coaching sessions before, okay. and um, I was able to identify some of my strengths. I have relator, harmony, focus, deliberative, and restorative. Whoa. And I found it very exciting <laughs> to discover these things about myself. I felt like the Gallup strength um, test was very was very spot on. So I've tried mm -hmm. a number of different personality tests, and I just find myself um, going. I find myself in just different areas, and it's very difficult for me to pick. Or I find that I don't know myself so well to be able to choose. Mm. found mm. and I really saw myself in these different um, strengths although I thought I would have some other strengths but yeah I have what I have yeah you have what you have I have what I have <laughs> and <laughs> the best thing is just to work with it exactly yeah. make yeah. the best yeah. of it Shola make the best yeah. of it make the best of it <laughs> yeah. th thank, thank, thank you and thank you for Lucia. you know you see I've seen how you've moved aggressively with the coaching sessions and I'm like whoa this lady will just not stop, you know, you know, she will just not stop, I, you know, but it's good. I love it. You're creating great things. And I'm so proud Thank to be you. associated with you. Okay. I'm just going to read something now. So in a recent study, you know, as to strength development, we, you know, there's the Harvard, which Harvard calls reflected best self, RBS exercise. Mm. 
Their method allows managers to develop a sense of personal best in order to increase their full potential. What is your opinion, you know, as to, yeah, that study says, look, can we mm. develop our, you know, our best self, you know, increase our, you know, be personal best. What, you've talked around it, but I just wanted you to also uh, have your thoughts around uh, where and how you, you're playing in that area. Wow. Okay. So I think that, I mean, for me, that's really spot on. I think that managers, leaders who have discovered their best self are the best types of people to work with. Um, because what then happens is that somebody who has discovered their own best and somebody who understands that we all have a best mm. is an automatic great leader because they want you to discover your best. They also don't put square pegs in round holes. One of my favorite things, you cannot put a square peg in a round hole. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't mm -hmm. find somebody who is the complete opposite of a task. And because they are available, you assign them to it. And then they are banging their head against the wall. And then you are angry at them. You know, as leaders and managers, it's very important that we really do think about helping people become their best selves, right? Because mm -hmm. outside of them doing the job, they are also developing. And one day they will also become leaders. And you want them to have some great things that you instilled in them, some great things that you taught them, right? And some of that should be the fact that you help them identify the things that they were really good at and you gave them those tasks to do. Remember that, mm. that I had said earlier that your areas of strength are natural energizers. You don't need Red Bull. You don't need caffeine. Do you understand? <laughs> you will be doing it and you will be energized. Um, Sometimes when I'm even not feeling well, when I'm feeling physically unwell, and you ask me to do something that is, an, that is in an area of my strength, I just light up and I do it. You know, because mm. that's just how we've all been created. It is a phenomenon in life. It's not, you know, Gallup that invented it. I didn't invent it. CA didn't invent it. That's just mm. how it is. Mm. And so when you're a manager and you have a team of people, helping them really operate in those areas that are their natural strength helps everybody yourself especially because all your KPIs are all connected. Do you understand? If your team is doing well, you are also doing well. So I think that as leaders and managers, like what this Harvard Review says is very important, you know, finding, finding your best self, first of all, as a leader, and then now getting to the point where you are empowering your people so that they can also get onto that journey. Sometimes people don't know what they're really good at. It takes you as the leader telling them. I've had many, many people that, you know, I've worked with whether in a corporate setting or, you know, outside of the corporate, tell me, Felicia, do you know that you're really good at this? And the person saying that to me has helped me be like, oh, wow, is that really a thing? Because some things that we're also very good at, we don't think is a big deal. We think everybody's good at it. I'm sure there are many people on this um, session who the things that you are naturally good at, you just assume that everybody is good at it, right? So Shola was talking about her experience. And I remember during that workshop, one of the things that kept coming out was the fact that people really did feel that, the things that they do naturally, eh, Shibi is just, Shibi is normal to me. It's normal to everybody. No, it's not normal to everybody. You know, it's something special about you. And that's why I like to call it a superpower. And mm. so if you're a leader, if you're a manager, if you're running, running an organization here, please be very intentional on a daily basis to identify the strengths in your people. Gallup calls it being a strength scout. I love being a strength scout personally. I love to look at people and without them even taking the assessment, be like, okay, so you are clearly really good at a, B, C. So that that way, when I'm assigning tasks to you, or when I'm even having a one-on-one -on -one with you, I can tell you, okay, you know what? Maybe you're not so great in this area, but did you know that you are actually fantastic in this area? So we're all not perfect. You know, we're all working in progress, but it's very important that we help people identify those areas that they are really, really good at. Okay, so I, I've dropped uh, Felicia's, and thanks Felicia for, for that insight. I've dropped Felicia's details, you know, uh, Instagram and do, you know, she has like 1 million people following her, but just add yourself ah. to it. <laughs> just add yourself to it so that at least maybe somehow she would, ha she would have your time, but I'm sure she will, when you mention strengths, you have your time. Just mention strengths, you have your time. <laughs> but, but, no, so Felicia, uh, now looking at the J Junior Achievement Nigeria, right? Junior Achievement yes. Nigeria. Um, so tell us, um, now as a transformation coach, uh, yeah. have you been able to you know, exert this influence on ensuring that the youth uh, become more responsive or, you know, uh, driven towards the strength philosophy? Hmm. So junior, junior Achievement in Nigeria, what we do there is we empower youth. So we run programs that empower youth, right? And we run a whole bunch of different programs. They are 
They are often funded by organizations that are very passionate about the youth. And we have a lot of amazing, amazing funders, partners, sponsors, and all that good stuff. Mm. You know, part of the work that we do is focusing on helping the youth in four core areas, um, financial literacy, digital literacy, entrepreneurship, and work readiness. And a lot of which all comes under leadership, right? So we're very big on raising transformational leaders, raising the leaders of tomorrow, people that you know, will lead in their sectors. And we've been doing this now for over 20 years. Unfortunately for us, we have a lot of success stories. Um, we, we have a lot of alumni of our programs that are either running their own organizations or are thriving you know, where, wherever they are working. And a lot of them do credit junior, junior achievement you know, and the programs that they took. The, the whole strength movement and junior achievement for me are like, they're like one, one in one, right? Um, a huge part of you being able to really be your best, like we've been saying since, is knowing yourself. And mm. so part of the work that we do is also letting people know that you are unique, right? So we live in Nigeria. A lot of us on this call, not in Nigeria, are shy in Africa. You know, our cultural context within the continent, a lot has to do with sometimes copying people that are successful, right? A lot of us, you know, have been told by our teachers, even like our parents that, ah, this person is successful, will be like them. You know, mm. this, your uncle was a doctor, he was successful, be like him. Mm. When you say that to a child or to a young person, you are creating something in their mind that makes them perhaps even want to study what that person studied. If I copy and paste that person. Now, when we say be like somebody, re-success, it doesn't mean go and do exactly what they did. Because for instance, if I tried to be a doctor TA, I would probably have killed people because there's nothing in my DNA that connects to being a doctor. Nothing about me, you know. I don't have anything at all that has any interest in <laughs> biology. Even biology as a, as a subject in school gave me a big headache. And so I think um, it's, you know, it's important, not just as an organization as Jan, but even all of us, you know, who, who I'm here have different circles of influence. We all have people that we influence, whether it's our children, our mentees, even as, you know, domestic staff, staff in your office, whoever. Help them find out what they are good at. Jonathan, look mm. at them and assess their behavior and say, okay, you know what? You are actually really good at this. Because what that does is that as they grow older, they hold on to that thing. So, so Gallup has, a, um, has an assessment for younger children slash teenagers. I think it's between age nine and 15. And yes. I had like my 10-year-old daughter do the assessment. And we talk about it a lot. You know, she randomly says stuff like, you know, I really do believe that, you know, I'm a good communicator because she's read this stuff and she sees herself, you know, manifesting it on a daily basis. So even when she's not trying, she sees herself mm. manifesting it. And so for her, it's creating that thing in her head. When she's older, there's no way that anybody can come and tell her, oh, you're not good at this, go and do this. Because she already knows from a young age that these are the things that I'm good at, right? And we talk about it and we also reinforce it. So the work that we do really is really helping the youth as well, you know, find their areas of strength and really focus on that. So we have a lot of successful alumni stories. We're not telling all our youth to be like those alumni people as they go and do what they did. No, mm. we're telling them you have your own special areas, you know, that you're really, really good at and you need to discover them and you need to start functioning in them. And what that also does is that it actually helps us as well because they then go and talk about it in other places. One thing I've noticed about, you know, kind of teaching um, youth programs and doing the work that we do at Jan is that a lot of these, you know, younger, young, young people go home, they talk to their parents, you know, and they even start educating their parents. In fact, a lot of our digital literacy programs, especially, these youth are teaching their parents how to be digitally forward, right? It, mm -hmm. Because we also deal with a lot of lower income, you know, communities. A lot of their parents, you know, had no clue about certain things. And these youth are actually the ones that are going home to tell their parents, did you know this, did you do that? Also, they are solving problems. Another big thing for us with the whole strength movement as well is teaching people about solving problems. Because really, we live in a continent that has many problems. The problems are endless. If all of us solved a problem in our community, we would get so far. So we teach them a lot about problem solving. And it's been amazing, TA, because you see them coming back, you know, and they are saying to you, oh, you know what, there's a gas leakage problem in their community and they want to build a product that would solve that. You know, there's a problem with maybe not having a traffic light somewhere and how some people's parents maybe got hit by or car dads or whatever. You know, they are thinking about things that are really happening in their areas and in their spaces. Yeah. And they are thinking about how they can solve those problems. And that's really what it's all about. Because once you discover your strengths, you will become a natural problem solver. Because when you see those problems, you are 
it's like magnets and sulfur. You are attracted towards mm. solving them. It's the same way that mm. you said that when you started Strength Africa, you were like, no, no, no. I mean, obviously, your strength is also to go big or go home. But you were like, no, this is not Strength Nigeria. It's Strength mm. Africa. You are solving a problem, you know? So discovering your strength actually leads you to then becoming an excellent problem solver. And that's what we're all about at Junior Achievement. And that's what I'm all about as an individual. So it's just a perfect marriage. <laughs> great, great, great. You know, look, I almost don't want you to even stop, you know, because, and I know that if I give you the chance, eh, we're going to be here till tomorrow. Just be here today. Uh, we'll just be here, <laughs> and then we'll just be writing, and, we'll, and some people will be writing books out of what we're saying. Now, the reality is that uh, if you've not done the strength test, I'm sure some of our people will be drop, dropping the links to do the strength test. Um, I want to know that my technical is on. Can, can we also flash Felicia's details, you know, emails, and, you know, every other contact details that... Uh, will be required just so that people can get in touch with that. Else, you have the Instagram handle. Um, so just be, you know, great at sending those messages and, you know, buzzing her about, look, I'm from I'm strength. I'm strength. Just say you want strength. She'll give you strength. You know, she has energy. Now, Felicia, you, you talked on something very, and I think that at some point, uh, you and I should even think on having a, a parenting session, particularly around mm. strength. Because there seems to, there seems to have been negative scripts that need, and thank God you're a, code, a, you're a techie person now. There have been some negative programming that have been installed. And that I think that using the strength methodology, we're able to uninstall and rewrite those right programs. And I have experienced some of those negative pro programming and I'm, I, over my rediscovery process, I've begun to also um, unlearn and also even sometimes I will have to shut down completely those uh, erase those things. Uh, so that's what I'm also we're doing at the boot camp. So we have a boot camp. I, I have some of our students here at the reinvention boot camp. It's a 21 day boot camp, you know, after the book uh, reinvention. And what we've done essentially is say, look, they are what you call self limiting beliefs. Now, let me share you one of my own self limiting mm -hmm. beliefs. And I don't know if, if this resonates with you. Um, my mom, my late mom, highly cerebral, professional, and all of that, rose up to the pinnacle of her career, woman leader, defied all the odds. But there was something she was always doing to me. She, she you know, she she would tell me, um, Taiwo in Yoruba, and I'll translate it to English. Uh, it says Taiwo Rora. You know, that means almost like be, be, be careful, you know, just excellent. Now she was doing it out of love, but she had instilled the negative programming in me to the point where even when I wanted to dare big things, remember, this is the way I'm, I am significant i just love big things even when i wanted to get big things mm. that echoes in my mind taiwo rora you know mm. i want to do something audacious taiwo Ro so rora. rora and you see negative programming done out of love cautious selfless love you know and <laughs> you know and that's just it so someone is saying absolutely too, there's a, a need to learn or learn and relearn. Yeah, and that's true. Great so comment on that one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so great, great comment, honestly. And so you see, those are the programs. So we need to also help parents. Yeah. Because now you said they are a strength scout too, but beyond this a strength scout, we also have to help redeem and maybe redeem or deliver people from this these limiting beliefs that have been ingrained and helping them set their path you know, towards discovering their strength. So just let me have your thoughts and then we'll, we'll start to round up short. <laughs> oh my goodness. You don't want to get me started on this topic, CA. Mm -hmm. You know, like, it's a very, I think that it's even a very emotional topic for me because I think it's just so unfair how, so let me, let me go this way. In recent times, all of us know that there, there's been a lot of, um, there's been a lot of, depression you know amongst the youth even older people let's be honest but let me focus on the youth for the purpose of our discussion yeah. a lot of the youth that i have you know either encountered whether directly or through a friend that are depressed and some have even committed suicide that's the truth i'm being very open and honest it's because they weren't accepted mm. and it starts with their parents it's because they were always they were constantly compared whether it was to a sibling or to somebody the expectation of them was so outside of who they really are or who they were created to be. So whether it's parents trying to force the life that they wanted to live, that they didn't get to live on their children, or it's parents imagining this is success, success is this, and so you must be this, you know, and all that. Now, in 
the times when I was growing up, the same thing happened. Our parents parented us similar. Let's be honest, all of us on this session, I'm sure that we all have similar stories of, you know, parents trying to make you do something that they thought was best. The problem is that we now live in a different time, but whether we like it or not. The youth of nowadays do not respond to things the way that we responded to things. So there are certain things that you, that your mother or father said to you or to me that you would have been like, sure, I've heard you. Or maybe you ignore them. Maybe you're a bit upset, but you move on. These guys are not moving on. Those things are becoming big things within them. And it's causing a lot of emotional trauma, depression, and all kinds of issues. Why am I going this route? I'm going this route because it's very important that we stop trying to enforce what we think is best onto mm. our children or onto our mentees or whoever it is that's looking up to us or whoever it is that we have influence over. Because it's actually causing a lot of emotional trauma that we have mm. now seen is leading to suicide and all kinds of horrible things in our community, which was not a norm in our environment before. You know, in Nigeria, in Africa, we didn't really hear a lot of these stories. Now it's, now it's here, let's not pretend. It's here. What do we do? Yeah, what do we do? We look at our children as individuals. You know, we look at them as individuals. They are all different. Some people have five children and they are all very different. You know, That's some true. of them are very school smart. Some of them are not, are, are very good at certain things, but they are not school smart. Being school smart is not the beginning and end of the world. I'm sorry, it's not. Say so again. I'm, I'm not one of those parents that, you know, oh my God, you know, my children have to score all A's or whatever. I don't believe that it's even possible to constantly do that. Even if you do that in the first few years of your life, there will come a time, maybe when you get to university, where you might not be scoring all A's because mm. you are not great at everything. You know, you are really good at certain things. And so for me, I think that we just have to be very, very sympathetic. If you were parented in a certain way, don't think that that's the best way to parent. If there's any area of your parenting that you didn't like, can you please not do it to your children? It's not nice. Mm. Please, let's, let's do better. We know better, <laughs> so let's do better. It's one of my favorite things. We know better, let's do better. Let's right? do better. If, yeah, let's do better. If your children, if you have children that are not, maybe they're not so, maybe they, academically, they're they are okay. They're not all A's. Why don't you look at what they're good at? Mm. Some of those children might be good at art. Some of them might be good at sports. In fact, I'll tell you a story. I have a very, very good friend whose son is excellent in soccer. They use that excellence in soccer to get him to do better academically. Why? Because they found a way to let him know that unless you are doing well, well, your own personal best is what I mean by well, as in his own level of personal best, mm. you will not be able to play soccer. And they attached some conditions to it and he started doing better. But guess what? Sometimes better is a B. My own mm. B can be your own C or your own A. Do you understand? My own okay. C can be your own A or your own B. We all don't have to score A's because we are all not gifted in the same thing. So it's important as parents that we stop doing that. It's very wrong. And we're mm. killing our children. That's the truth. So please look at your children, you know, whoever it is that you have influence over, look at what they're good at and encourage them. And if you maybe have contact with a child who you feel like his or her parents is not doing it properly. Why don't you do what you can for that child? And you constantly encourage that child whenever you are around them in the things that they are good at. I have so many children around me. You know, I have some that are really school smart who score all A's all the time. And I have some that, you know what, they are B and C students. And it's okay because guess what? They are really good at other things. And those things that they are really good at is actually their pathway. I know kids that have gotten music scholarships to Ivy League universities, great universities. Do you understand? Or have gotten drama scholarships or something that is not the norm. So let's stop focusing on just academics, mm. math, English, science. Not everybody is going to be an A student in those things. So let's get to really understand our children and let us assess what their personal best is. You know, mm. now if your child is not doing their own personal best, eh, hey, that's when you can answer saying uncle or auntie, your personal best is this, so you can do better. But if their personal best is not and A, then please let them be their personal best. And let's stop trying to enforce what we think is best on our children. I think, I think I've even diverted from the original question, but I'm not so passionate about this topic. No, no, no. Sorry, I can't yeah, yeah, of course. No, no. Yeah, of course. The, <laughs> it bothers me so much. <laughs> Look, and okay. that was a very sensitive, very, very sensitive spot, you know. And I think that, like, like everyone has said, I've had Oba say, Look, this must go viral. A lot of says, Look, this is spot on, you know. So I'm saying, look, this is a very powerful session. And uh, Gobo is saying, very powerful session. Look, and so really, oh, the responsibility on you now, I'm doing my command strength. We must plan a parenting 
strength parenting. No, there's no way we want to do it. Let's so do it. Let's do it, TA. We have to do it, though. We have to do it. Let's do it, TA. Let's do it. We have to. Okay, great. And we have to rescue a lot of people from this, you know, this, yeah. this, this, this would I call it, um, what do I describe it? it as? I think back to what you said about a limiting belief. I think it's a limiting belief as well. Um, I think that a lot of us, it's just the way that we were conditioned, right? And mm. we just have not all come out of it. A lot of people are still in it. So we just have to break that limiting belief that everybody must be an A student. I don't understand. How? Ibo lot of Sorry, that's the thing about. What did they write it? Sorry, let me translate. What did they write that everybody must be an A student? Is there a law that says it? There's no law that says it. Mm. <laughs> God, God. This is deep. You know, and look, I know you are quite busy and it's bank holiday here in Nigeria and everybody's just trying to refresh in the Idato for tomorrow. Oba says the problem is a silent pandemic that has killed yeah. a lot of great strength. And that is it. A silent look, pandemic. Honestly, this and it's true. It's eating into the ebb of the society and crushing us so that we can't even think, you know. And, you know, I always say something. When you don't think, what happens is that you sing. Uh, and when mm. you sing, you begin to sink. And as you mm. see, you begin to stink, all right? Because, and that's what wow. is happening. So we have some, you know, a gamut of stinking, uh, and the environment is just thinking because we fail to think, all right? Mm. Uh, Felicia, I can't thank you enough. I, this one, uh, this one that you have come to, you know, shake some tables, you know, and just come and set us on another mode. And everybody's now saying we're energized, we have to be viral. You have given us another assignment now. We have to take care of and go and evangelize about strengths to parents. Ah. Olusha, are you ready? You know, let's do it. So, so let, let's have your closing your closing thoughts as to you know because this is almost an hour now. We, we almost done. Yeah. Okay. Closing thoughts. Okay. So thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, TA, for having me on your platform. Thanks everyone for joining us. Um, I think for me, I think that include. I think that my closing re re remarks were actually in that previous statement <laughs> that I made <laughs> when you asked me that question, and I just went in a yes. different direction because I was so, you know, passionate about it. Um, I think it's really just the core of it is really this, you know, let us look at people for who they are. Mm -hmm. Let's remember that we, we, we might be parents, loved ones, but we didn't create anybody really. Yeah, you might have created them as far. They came, you know, from your lineage or, you know, they came from your genes, but you didn't create them in the sense that you don't know what seed is in them, right? And so it's very important that we help those around us, you know, our children, our adopted children, our community really grow the seed that is in them. Everybody has a seed of greatness in them, every single person. And it's different things, you know, for some people, it's artistic. Some people, you know, it's science. Some people, it's business. Some people, it's entrepreneurship. There are so many different seeds that God has put inside every single one of us. And I really just hope that after this session, we do some more research. You know, you can DM me if you have any questions. You can DM TA as well. We're very happy to answer the questions. But really just become that person who is going to do better within your community and your society because you will not do what the past has done that's been a mistake. So you will not, not think about the things that you're doing or the things that you're saying. You really look at people and you really see that, okay, you know what? This person has a seed of greatness in them. Even if it is, it is, it is a colleague at work that's not doing their job well. In fact, sometimes I... I do this thing sometimes where I recommend to people that the job they are doing is not for them, that they should go and look for mm. something else. And I will advise you on what you should do. You know, like I can say to you, listen, you are working for me and because I love you, this work you are doing is not working for you. You will gain a bad reputation if you continue to do this work because it's not you. You are not thriving in this job. There's nothing about this job that is bringing out even a single good thing in you. Why don't you go and look in this area or this area? And I can even help you get a new job. But it's just important that, you know, that we don't just leave, leave people walking around blindly when we know better, you know. So if you want to be light, you know, just be light completely. Really help people see better. The seed is inside every single person. It's inside every single one of us. Help people around you, nurture them. Um, with your children, especially the young people they use, please, please, please don't make the mistakes of the past. And let's also realize that everything is different from how it used to be in our time. Yes, it's the same human beings, but because of the digital age, Things have changed. You know, our kids are growing up faster than they should. They are seeing more things than they should. So we have to parent them differently than we were. And I really believe that all of us on this session will do better because we're better people. Yeah. So that's it from me. Thank you so much.
Well, well, thank you, thank you, thank you. And you know, look, it's been an amazing time with you as always, you know, and also on the Strength Discussion Series, amazing, you know, coaches from all over, you know, we've had them from every part of the world, and we're all, even every part of Africa, every part of Africa, and we're, we're taking them, you know, even further now, you know, as in taking it beyond Africa, just so that we can also have a, a blend. And thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, I don't know whether my technical team, you know, because everybody's working from home, uh, whether they are sleeping or not, but uh, by now they should have had your details. Okay, great. <laughs> They've woken up. Yeah, yeah, no, we... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for Lucia's details there, you know, she's a coach, Gallup certified strength coach. She's also a transformation coach. So you could hit her up and, uh, you know, take this discussion for that. You're taking the discussion for that. She can coach you effectively also along those lines. And we're saying, look, this is one of the best things to, to discover uh, that will help you, you know, attain top, uh, uh, top performance as the, as the case may be. Felicia, I'm grateful. I thank you. I do not take this for granted. You know, we probably should have been paying you almost like $5,000 just to even uh, take you on this. But, but you know, the, the, we, we, are, we are trying hard. We are, we are working hard. So please uh, bear with us. And I know this thank you is from my heart. So as I brought it out from my heart, you know, uh, and so please accept it, accept it, accept it. Thank accept you it. so much for having me. And thanks everyone for joining us. Take care. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. We're streaming live so you could watch a replay and you could share with your friends or family or anyone that you think needs to hear this. Uh, see you next time. Uh, see you next Thursday. Uh, with Thanks, everyone. Bye.